Hello, Buxton United Methodist Church. Welcome to worship for the weekend of May 17th, 2020. We are glad that you came to worship with us today. And it has been a beautiful, beautiful weekend with beautiful spring weather and sunshiny skies and uh, grass is getting green and the birds are singing and it's magnificent. And uh, for those of you who have had a birthday, we want to say happy birthday to you. And I wanna, I was one of those lucky folks, and I want to share with you something that I was given. This is from our Callie Boggs. It is my favorite superhero, Wonder Woman in chocolate. And so I'm going to share it with all of you. It says, you and chocolate always save the day. And so... Unfortunately, I can't share the chocolate with you. I'll have to make the sacrifice. But uh, my birthday wishes and the birthday message of you and chocolate always save the day. I wanted to share with all who have had birthdays. All right. Uh, the only other announcement that I have is please know that we are going to be uh, doing some special things with our graduates. So parents of graduates know that there will be information coming on that and also that we will be soon having another drive through Giving Sunday. So again, stay tuned for information on that. And now let's go before our Lord and begin with our call to worship, which this morning was written by the Reverend Quentin Chin. Brothers and sisters, if you lift your net and it is empty, come here. We'll cast it out again into Christ's abundance. If you open your eyes but do not recognize the Holy One, come here. We'll find the risen Christ here among us. If you are hungry, come here. Christ has prepared you breakfast, the most important meal of the day. Let us eat and receive nourishment for our bodies and our souls that we may leave strengthened and ready to serve. And now would you join in the opening prayer. As we come to you this morning, O oh God, we come into your presence with thanksgiving. Thanksgiving for your provision in the week past and the promise of your provision in the days ahead. Let us sit now in your company feasting on the spiritual meal you have prepared so lovingly for us to nourish our souls. Amen. And our first hymn of the morning is Morning Has Broken, and it has that beautiful, beautiful additional piano part that we, uh, many of us are familiar with from the Cat Stevens rendition but let me warn you, this one's a fast one, so once we get going, you better be ready to run. <laughs> God. 
It's not our Linda, but it was good. <laughs> All right, and now our psalm this morning is Psalm 30, which is a psalm of David written for the dedication of the temple. I will exalt you, Lord, for you lifted me out of the depths and did not let my enemies gloat over me. Lord, my God, I called to you for help and you healed me. You, Lord, brought me up from the realm of the dead. You spared me from going down to the pit. Sing the praises of the Lord, you, his faithful people. Praise his holy name, for his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may stay for the night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. When I felt secure, I said I will never be shaken. Lord, when you favored me, you made my royal mountain stand firm. But when you hid your face, I was dismayed. To you, Lord, I called. To the Lord, I cried for mercy. What is gained if I am silenced, if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you? Will it proclaim your faithfulness? Hear, Lord, and be merciful to me. Lord, be my help. You turned my wailing into dancing. You removed my sackcloth and clothed me with joy. That my heart may sing your praises and not be silent. Lord my God, I will praise you forever. The word of the Lord. And now I would like to read for you from the scripture, the gospel. The 21st chapter of John, verses 1 through 14. Afterward, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Galilee. It happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, also known as Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, that is James and John, and two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them, and they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. He called out to them, friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, it is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him for he had taken it off and he jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from shore, about a hundred yards. When they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals there with fish on it and some bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish you have just caught. So Simon Peter climbed back into the boat and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish. 153 of them, but even with so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable unto your sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Well, if there's one thing we learn from today's scripture... 
It is that Jesus believed in men cooking. Our Lord built the fire and prepared breakfast for his disciples. And since we're to follow his example, do you know what that means? It means real men do cook. And don't the rest of us appreciate it when you do. <laughs> you know what else the Bible says real men do? They make the coffee. There's a whole book in the Bible devoted to it. He brews. <laughs> That's the extent of my, um, my um, comedic abilities for you this morning. <laughs> well, this week we're back to our Easter texts. We took a week off for Mother's Day to look at Susanna Wesley and the lessons we could learn from her. But now we're back as we are still in the Easter season. And today is one of my favorite texts. I sure do love this tender scene at the beach of the Sea of Galilee. We have weary fishermen after a night's work without any catch at all. Meanwhile, the Lord was walking down at the shore. And then we see our Lord do one of the tenderest, kindest acts of service for his disciples in this very intimate setting. He prepares them a fire to warm them and that they can rest by, and he prepares them breakfast to eat. But there's a whole lot that is happening here. And just so that you know, the end of this story we'll see next week. But today we have Jesus nourishing and serving his disciples, nourishing them in body and in soul. Now, I know we're a ways from the actual holiday of Easter Day, and much has happened since then, but we still are in the Easter season. And this is the season when Jesus, after rising from the dead, made appearances to his disciples before he ascended into heaven and also before the coming of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. But I want you to think back through time, back to the week before Easter, Holy Week. That was that week leading up into Easter. Think back to the events of Monday, Thursday of that week. That was the night of the Last Supper. Jesus and his disciples had celebrated the Passover meal together. Then Jesus took off his outer garment and served them in a very tender way by washing their feet. Only a few hours after, they were praying in a garden at the Mount of Olives. There, he asked them to stay awake and pray with him, but their bodies were too weak, so they slept. At that point, the guards came to arrest Jesus and these same men, men who had given up everything just to be able to follow him and join him in his ministry, they all fled. They ran away scared. And most of those men, all in fact except for John, left their Lord to die alone on the cross. These were the things Jesus' friends did last, the things that happened just before he died. So how do you think the disciples felt about what they had done? I'm guessing they felt as if they had let Jesus down very badly. Have you ever let anyone down? Very badly, perhaps? I think in truth we all have. And I know we have all let our Lord down at some point or another. Because none of us is without sin. But in today's text, we see something that is amazing about Christ our Lord. And that is that despite running away from him, frightened, despite denying even knowing him, despite leaving him all alone to die, despite anything that you or I have ever done or left undone that would let our Lord down, Christ's response is to build a fire, to prepare a meal of nourishment for us, to sit in intimate company with us, serving us, to let us know that all is still well. 
We see in this scene of Jesus making breakfast for his disciples on the beach, the embodiment of what years later St. Paul would write in Romans when he said, For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. Nothing can separate us. That means that we can never let our Lord down so much that he does not wish to be with us again. To the contrary, our Lord desires nothing more than to be in our company, serving us, warming us, restoring us, healing us, feeding us nourishment for body and soul. My friends, have you ever felt like Peter and the disciples? Have your hearts ever been as empty as your fishing nets because you felt you'd been a failure by letting others down? Well, I have good news for us all. Our God is the God of great abundance and joy. Whatever your need, bring it to the shore. Sit by the fire and be warmed in Christ's presence. Let him nourish your body and your soul by feeding you breakfast. It's the most important meal of the day, and he knows it. Come and have breakfast with your Lord. How simply and how tenderly. Jesus deals with us. He knows our needs and he knows our hunger. Daily, come to him for breakfast and imagine him serving you. Probably most of us would not want that to be bread and fish, but perhaps a muffin and coffee. Let him daily fill your cup. Daily, he beckons us. Come to me and have breakfast. Would you pray with me? Holy God, we thank you that there is nothing we could ever do or not do that will ever separate us from your love. Lord, especially at times like these that are times of fear and uncertainty, that is a certainty that we can rely on, that we know that you are still with us and we are not alone. Lord, we lift up all those who are sick and are in need of healing, and we pray, Lord God, for all of those who are working on the front lines against COVID-19, doctors and nurses, first responders, law enforcement. Lord, we pray your safety to be with them. We pray for our soon-to-be graduating seniors, Lord God, as this has been a very difficult and unusual year, and We pray, Lord God, that they know how much they are loved and cherished and that we will honor them both now and in the future when things are looking more normal. We pray, Lord God, for a healing for this pandemic that it would come soon and very soon. And now we pray together the prayer that you taught us saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now it is our time of remembering and giving back to our Lord. Uh, If you have your offering, please set it aside now. That's a wonderful time. And if you have anything else that you wish to give to the Lord, bring it now as we remember with our heart. Through it all, through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus, I've learned to trust in God. Through it all, through it all, I've learned 
to depend upon God's word. We thank him and we give him all our heart. Would you join now in this Easter season? I love to do the Apostles' Creed together. So could we share that together, please? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our final hymn for the morning uh, is a lovely, lovely song, The Water is Wide. And I think it's that intimate little scene um, along the beach. And so what I've done is I have adapted the words to that. So I hope you enjoy this one. Once I get us going. The water is wide, I cannot get old, and neither have I wings to fly in a little boat that can carry two. Closing prayer for you that is a beautiful one, uh, a Jesuit prayer. But I hope you enjoyed that. That um, was a way to recapture and uh, 
that intimate scene of Christ on the beach and how he beckons each and every one of us to that intimate kind of a, a setting and a time together each and every day. And so here we close now with a benediction from a Jesuit prayer. Jesus, you meet us at the water's edge of our ordinary lives. You accept us lovingly. You encourage us. You invite us to abundance. Nourished by the food of your word, warmed by the fire of your unfailing love, may we in turn nourish, heal, and love others. Amen. Go forth in peace this week. May God bless you all. Stay safe, stay healthy, and um, we'll be together again soon. God bless you. Bye-bye.